Hello, my name is Dr. Anita Patankar and I am traveling back in time to share with you SSLA's origin story. I think it was around 2003-2004, I don't remember the exact months, when the Chancellor of Symbiosis International University, uh, Professor Dr. S. P. Muzumdar, reached out to faculty members across Symbiosis Institutes with an idea of exploring something innovative in terms of undergrad education, something that would change the uh, perception of uh, Indian higher education, something that would draw students back into the classroom, maybe deal with issues related to apathy, um, to where do you learn from, who do you learn from, how many different sources of knowledge and information should you seek, how important uh, is the art of questioning, how important is scientific inquiry and research. And for a few of us, at Symbiosis at that time, uh, it was like a breath of fresh air. I remember being a part of that group that explored many, many ways and options for revitalizing the Indian classroom. I'd been a teacher for by that time, I think almost uh, 25 plus years, uh, teaching at undergrad as well as postgrad. And I'd seen the changes that had taken place in the classroom. From the teacher being the guru, in 1982 to the teacher being one source of information uh, after the 1990s. So we explored, we studied and we kind of focused and centered on the American liberal arts model. By 2005, we were convinced that the American liberal arts model uh, was something that we needed to look into, that we needed to be inspired by and that we wanted to try it out here. We wanted to do an experiment of sorts. Because try and remember, in those years, nobody in India was talking about a liberal arts philosophy, a liberal arts pedagogy. Uh, we didn't have a liberal arts program. Back in time, during the times of Nalanda and Takshashila, of course, we had a holistic education. But over the years, uh, higher education had changed, uh, many compulsions, uh, the importance of employment, uh, the numbers that India deals with. So many factors impacted the changes that took place in the Indian undergrad classroom. By 2006, April, uh, we had announced a three-year diploma and the Symbiosis Center for Liberal Arts uh, was set up uh, and I consider it probably one of the most momentous um, events in my life because I think that is what drew me into the liberal arts. Uh, and the fact that I am here now uh, as the director of the Symbiosis School for Liberal Arts uh, is courtesy that uh, one decision. From 2005 till I think 2009, um, we experimented with the liberal arts program. We were heavily impressed uh, and influenced by the variations in the liberal arts model uh, in America. Uh, we studied many, many innovative pedagogies. We looked at teacher training, we looked at course outlines, and we realized that there were some things that we believe, and we still believe this very passionately, that Indian students deserve. Indian students deserve a classroom environment that is conducive to learning, conducive to thinking, conducive to uh, discussions. We wanted the classroom to be a co-constructed uh, space where the teacher and the student were partners in learning. We wanted faculty members to believe that they could learn so much from students. We also realized that if India had to grow, then India needed to invest in citizens who knew how to think. Not just think out of the box, but think, think independently. This meant that they would have to study, learn, think, discuss, debate, argue over, mull over, not just one discipline, but multiple disciplines. That they'd have to look at what was happening in India and see the context. They'd have to understand history. They'd have to look into the future. They'd have to read novels. They'd have to see movies, documentaries. They'd have to look at what was happening around the world. And against the background of history and what was happening in the world, they would have to learn to contextualize what was happening in their own lives. 
So we wanted a space that was active and energetic where we partnered with uh, well-chosen faculty members. We designed wonderful course outlines. We designed new courses that had never been taught before. And I'm happy that Symbiosis as a university decided to invest. So in 2011, when the Symbiosis School for Liberal Arts opened its doors, literally, um, to every young student who'd graduated from the 12th uh, standard, we opened it up with this promise that we would deliver a four-year program where students could learn to think, where students would learn to realize the power and the potential of their own minds and where these minds would be nurtured. We also made a similar promise to our faculty members that this is a space where you would have academic autonomy, where you would have the freedom to discuss and debate issues within the classroom, that the classroom and the corridors of SSLA would be sacred, they'd be sacred spaces where we would respect and appreciate diversity diversity of thought, diversity of opinion, that we would take the effort to understand why different people thought differently. Why does someone not agree with what I say? Why do I have to invest in the time and the effort to try and understand somebody else's perspectives? So from 2003, 2004 onwards, my personal journey with the liberal arts began through the Symbiosis Center for Liberal Arts, which still offers a three-year diploma, into the uh, setting up of India's first four-year liberal arts program, the Symbiosis School for Liberal Arts, which now enters into its 10th year. We're nine and a half years old, and it's amazing for me to see how far we've come. From 2003, 2005, when no one knew what liberal arts was, I still remember in 2005, traveling across the country, telling people what liberal arts is, what liberal arts could mean for their children, and the potential of a single mind. It is with that promise of nurturing minds and creating a safe space for faculty, staff, and teachers that the Symbiosis School for Liberal Arts was created. That was our dream and our vision, and it still remains.